Hello, this will be another video. Uh, links to the previous ones in this series will be in the description looking at claims of ancient lost high technology and then comparing them with facts and uh, basically dis dismantling them piece by piece. Uh, I uploaded this yesterday but I had an audio issue, it was very crackly so I'm re-uploading it. I'll add a little bit more to it and hopefully make it a little uh, briefer than the original version but uh, let's just begin. Julius Caesar, he's credited with this quote. Men in general are quick to believe that which they wish to be true. Another famous uh, Roman emperor, um, philosopher, was Marcus Aurelius. What we do now echoes in eternity. This is an important point because it has to do with living uh, a good life. And we, what we do now does carry with us, um, however your mind now Abraham Lincoln, no man has a good enough memory to be a successful liar. This will also be an important feature in regards to this. And so here's the claims. Uh, amongst the lost high ancient technology argument goes like this. Whether it's on the, the, I would call it the extreme end of ancient aliens to the more uh, less extreme, let's just call it, goes like this. Uh, it cannot be done. It's impossible with primitive tools. Therefore, it has to be ancient machining, ancient lost high technology arguments. Now, uh, it's often, well, very, very often, this, this is pretty much uh, runs the gamut of this particular uh, argument, this community. The Greeks couldn't do it, the Romans couldn't do it, the Greeks couldn't, didn't do it, and the Romans didn't do it. Not only that, it's uh, pre-dynastic Egyptians could only have done it because even dynastic Egyptians couldn't have done this stonework. Uh, I'm focusing on Brian Foster uh, because, uh, but it'll also reflect on, on others, but I'm focusing on him because he's uh, very popular. So many other channels uh, quote him and use him and use his, uh, him as a basis of there, but uh, that's how the argument runs. Now here's, for instance, a screenshot of a article blog post by Brian Foster, and the, here, for instance, the precision of the work could not have been achieved by the dynastic Egyptians or later Greeks and Romans, and thus predates them all, and had to have been done by people who had advanced machining technology. This describes this argument in a nutshell. Every word he just said was wrong. Links in the description to previous videos where people are not theoretically, but they do the demonstrations and they show that all of this is wrong. But let's go further. So I'm just calling it out. It's snake oil. I, I find it very hard to accept how someone could be so wrong on all these features, uh, on all these facts intentionally. It's... Uh, it, well, let's just go, look, so we'll stick with those claims. Now, before I go on, courtrooms in Australia, um, it's basically the same, I'm sure, in England, but probably in America. When you're on trial, your previous criminal history cannot be brought up and used against you unless you use, uh, in your defence, you try and say, I am of good character, at which point you're able to bring these things in. Now, this would also apply that if you attack your opposition's character and you know suggest that they're covering up or they're blind or they're just not dealing with facts well now this opens you to those same accusations so uh i'm not casting the first stone this has already been thrown it's been thrown many many times so deal with that now ancient lost high technology men in general are quick to believe that which they wish to be true and herein lies the argument now We'll come back to these, for instance, this is a 3D lifelike asymmetrical sculpture in basalt of Julius Caesar. It does exist. Brian Foster and others will tell you that this does not exist. We'll, uh, literally, they will say that the Romans could not, <clears throat> did not uh, work with basalt, porphyry, granite and all these other stones. This is an unbelievably ridiculous statement to be made. Uh, it, well, let's go more. So, for instance, these are the sarcophagus of Helena and the sarcophagus of Constantina. In Rome, they're made of Egyptian porphyry. Uh, Roman records also describe the import. Well, so, but let's begin 
So these are often dismissed. It said, oh, well, the Romans just stole this from Egypt and it's not, it's not Romans because Romans could not do it. Uh, therefore, well, these have classical Roman and Greek iconography. Even historic scenes, uh, Roman gear, yeah, the, even uh, Phrygian cap, etc., uh, Roman era helmets. It's the like it's, it's almost a dictionary of, of Roman gods and iconography. This exists. It's made of very very hard stone. Now let's work on when they when these are mentioned. It's oh well, no 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 they just took it well. Well, here's the amazing fact. We'll come into those. So let's just say they had this box, but then they did carve these Roman images on it. And then they still created flat surfaces, right angles, and all of these features, precision features, which are said to be impossible, let alone the fact of the beauty of the sculpture in three-dimensional relief as well and the polishing and all those other features. So the Romans stole a, a, a plain box and then did this carving on top of it, this means something. You know, this is this adds a, a whole other level of difficulty to it because not only did they carve these 3D images, then they you know resurfaced the blocks and then they created right angles and all these other features which are said to have been impossible, but they exist. Uh, this is one of the Serapium boxes from uh, from Egypt. Again only could be achieved with lost high ancient technology. This is, I'm not putting words into my mouth. This is not like one, uh, like a quote mine of one statement that they made um, and then I'm focusing on that. This is a repeated published claim over and over and over. So it's not quote mining. The whole argument is based on this and the Serapium boxes, which are essentially a granite box, uh, is used as evidence of technology. You know, now, now this is a granite box and this has got carving on it. Now um, this is more this is more impressive. I I I like if you if you're not impressed by that, but you're impressed by a granite box that is undetailed. Well, like you know, I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't be helped, you know. But uh, these are not small boxes either, so you get an idea of the size of these as well. They are a little bit smaller, but these again are not little tiny. Um, boxes. Here's another example just of, uh, of the detail and the carving and all the right angles and straight edges and surfaces are all impossible to the Greeks and Romans, even the dynastic Egyptians who said, you know, so therefore, well, uh, this is, no, yeah. what are we, a joke to you? Um, the, well, Brian Foster and the all these other channels which orbit this area uh, never cover these things, and when they do mention Greek and Romans, it's it's very dismissive. It said they cannot do this, they did not do this. That suggests that they know something, that they've they're familiar with uh, Greek and Roman history and temples and artifacts. So either they've not done the work that they claim to have done, and said it's not impossible because they would have to know something about those things, or they're incredibly incompetent. There's only really two viable explanations for this. Either they're lying or they're incompetent. And as we've already seen with, with regards to uh, drilling with copper and these other features, uh, well, they are either incompetent or they're suppressing information. And given that even they've been told about these, they've seen the comments, um, they've seen the links, but they say no and they refuse to accept it. Uh, well, it, there is no polite way. There's no nice explanation for it. But uh, another feature is the symmetry of Egyptian sculptures, and some of them have been measured. Uh, symmetry in the design of Egypt was a really important thing. So when they had niches inside a tomb or a temple, they were always symmetrical. This was uh, their, this was a very important feature for them. They were, they were into it, but uh, and then it said, well, this symmetry, but then it could not. Other cultures could not achieve it, and well, you know, here's the thing. Symmetry was not important for these others because they were actually in doing asymmetrical in that they were doing lifelike sculptures. I don't know, again, I don't know how you, you know, there's no other way to cut it. This 
is much more impressive than that. And even this symmetry itself, this can be achieved with very simple tools, essentially a set of calipers and a skilled craftsman could uh, do these things. This, but I don't know, I don't care how you want to cut it, is much more impressive than this. So what am I, a joke to you? Why, why is this dismissed? Uh, but you're only made of marble. This is the other argument. So then I go, oh, but the, the Romans only worked in marble, and marble's some soft stone. Well, let's, uh, firstly, let's address the marble issue. Uh, the inability of them to Google or the deliberate suppression of information, they accuse others always. They're suppressing, they're blind, they don't want to see. Well, I, you know, once you say that, now you're open to that. And so marble is not some cheap stone. It's not soft and it's not easily worked. That's why marble and granite countertops, uh, floors and walls and sculptures are so still valued now. Marble is not a soft, cheap, easily chipped stone. Granite is superior in that it's less chip resistant and it's less scratch resistant, but marble coffee tables, countertops are not cheap and they're, they're also very beautiful, but it, marble uh, is a limestone that's metamorphosized. It's gone under, under a chemical change. It is no longer limestone. You don't see limestone countertops, sandstone countertops because it's granular, but marble is much you know, it, it is originally was limestone, and now it is something much closer to granite in its in its in its appearance, in its form. It's not granular, so this will be an argument often employed. Uh, but again, it's really just a, a matter of googling and doing a little bit of uh, research, and just you know, you well, why marble countertops? Why granite and marble? Because they're very hard, very beautiful stones that are not also easily scratched and you know because you have a countertop and you're chopping on it and bringing in your utensils you're going to rip it apart if it was limestone or sandstone you'll damage it very quickly marble and granite are favored for this particular reason granite is more durable less uh, susceptible to chipping and more scratch resistant but marble is no joke so if you've heard this particular argument again it's like don't Trust me, just look into it a little bit further and you'll see that this is actually, um, well, it's a deceptive argument. It's sort of trying, you know, it's trying to cheapen, once again, other cultures because, well, that's only marble. But the, the thing is, the, the, the Romans didn't only, and Greeks didn't only work in, work in marble. So, again, Brian Foster and, and just this whole community which revolves around lost high technology will... Uh, when they do mention Greeks and Romans, it's just to rubbish them, or they couldn't do this, they couldn't do that. This is just all, r like, wrong, <laughs> really, really, really wrong. Um, so they actually say this. We saw that screenshot before. Again, it's not quote mining one single off-the-cuff um, statement. It is repeated, repeated, repeated. The Kemet Institute and all these others, they keep saying this over and over again. And it is just not true. So, for instance, uh, basalt, granite, porphyry, we just Google. So this is uh, symmetrical Egyptian sculpture. This is an asymmetrical basalt sculpture from the Roman period. And it is not symmetrical, it is asymmetrical. It is a free, it's, it's a three-dimensional photo in basalt with all these flowing f features. Once again, uh, a, a symmetrical sculpture compared to this, I don't know how, <laughs> I really don't know how anyone could say that this is not only not impressive, but it's superior in terms of the art of sculpture. So what, what, what am I a joke to you <laughs> once again? Uh, here's just, you know, this is not a one-off as well. Now, uh, this is Caesar, there's uh, other um, marble sculptures as well, but this one's in basalt. There are many, many beautiful, asymmetrical, lifelike sculptures made in basalt and granite and, and so forth. So they'll tell you that we don't exist. They didn't do this. They could not do this. Well, they do exist and they could do this and they did do this and they did it in a huge scale, whether it's uh, giant single piece granite columns, Egyptian alabaster flooring, uh, countless examples of it across the 
the Greek, especially the Roman world. Now, Rome was not the city. Rome, Rome was basically the entire Mediterranean, a very wide... Dis the Roman Empire... My, sorry, my recorder just dropped out. So the Roman Empire was not just Rome, the city, or Italy. It was it covered the Medi whole Mediterranean and even a little bit further than that, where we had many different cultures, civilizations actually coming together and to create the empire. Uh, now I'll link, hopefully I'll remember to link this, so I posted this video a while back. The Greeks and Romans were the heirs of older civilizations such as Egypt and Mesopotamia. Greeks and Romans were not all at all shy about saying just this, so whether it's uh, Plato, Pythagoras, um, Arcebius of Alexandria, as in the Library of Alexandria, Huron, which Library of Alexandria, uh, so much came from these older civilizations, and this is they, they didn't really keep this a secret. Uh, in any, in many ways, they were uh, right into Egyptian culture. They built Egyptian temples in Rome and elsewhere, and incorporated these gods, but also this tradition of knowledge, especially through places such as Heliopolis. So, yeah, Romans. Um, so the question is, why do they deny I exist? Now, again, this is indicative of the wider lost high ancient technology community to uh, to dismiss or to make claims that the Romans could not, the Romans didn't, uh, when it's just not true. Uh, it's almost first year uh, history type of stuff, so easy to find, and they make statements could not or did not. Again, that implies that they've done the work and they know something, uh, because I, you know, I, you know, uh, S Samoans, uh, can't walk on their hands. Well, you know, how, how did I come to that conclusion? I would obviously have had to have done some work and studied Samoa and the Samoan people to realize that. But if yeah, they do, you know, they can walk on their hands. Saying something doesn't make it true. So, why do they deny the evidence? Well, uh, that's amongst things like you can't cut uh, granite with copper, you can't drill granite with copper, yet then they will, which is just patently false. This is uh, in earlier videos, uh, scientists against Smith have shown this in demonstrations and they refused to acknowledge these facts because the house of cards will come tumbling down. But for instance, then they'll say, oh, but right ang a right angle is evidence of lost high technology. So we know Serapian boxes will we'll do that shortly, but well, these Roman boxes, you know, there's a lot of straight edges and right angles there in all sorts of forms. So, yet for some reason, this doesn't count as uh, lost high technology. We need precise machining, ancient machining, ad advanced technology to do this. It's very important that they don't cover this, really, because this it, it, it dismantles, and that's why when it is mentioned, it's just uh, diminished. Or to say, no, this is just pre-dynastic. It was just, you know, everything's pre-dynastic. You know, no one could do anything as some lost culture out there and everyone who followed afterwards were just are just dim-witted lazy and couldn't do any work well uh, once you look through the examples everything they say is wrong there is uh, they they claim suppression they claim oppression they claim that there's a cover-up well there is and they, they are at the heart of it to protect this very profitable business model of theirs which relies on mystery and selling mystery and uh, any answer even demonstration must be suppressed because once this argument of it's impossible therefore lost high technology well if it is possible therefore no lost high technology therefore everything's gone and so it is so so important to protect this dogma by suppressing information by uh, di diminishing facts and you know magicians tricks look at my hand while I'm shaking with the others you know it's it is uh, just common you know so, did you see those granite boxes in Egypt? Unbelievable. Amazing. Right angles are impossible with stone tools. Again, this is not uh, one single, this is a repeated narrative which goes through. So, to that STFU. Uh, this is just one example. Again, uh, Scientists Against Smith or the Alexander Sokolov channel would be one to follow. Uh, in a future video, I'll be recommending some other videos where um, masons and, and experimental archaeologists actually do all these things which they claim are impossible but they can be done but they'll still claim it's impossible because well yeah anyway but uh so these things 
not only theoretically can be achieved, there are actually people doing it, but it's so, so important to say it isn't. So, Serapeum boxes. Egyptian architecture is magnificent. This work is magnificent, but it, uh, to say it's impossible without advanced lost high technology machinery, this is uh, it's an absurd statement because so many examples of people doing the impossible with, with these tools. However, so the Serapine boxes are perfectly flat. Uh, Serapine boxes have perfect right angle. Well, I'll just link this as well, um, where they show you the photos and they've gone through the boxes one by one. They don't cherry pick one box, cherry pick one portion of the box and say this is flat and this is a right angle. So there's a lot of cherry picking going on, but in this, uh, they highlight and they'll mention and which boxes do have 90 degree corners, inside corners are 90 degrees. This is just one, this is one example of such work there. However, there are many other boxes there as well in the Serapeum, and they do not have 90 degree corners. Uh, if you look at the photos, it's clear, it's evident that these boxes do not have 90 degree corners. There are a few that do, but the majority don't. And even those that do, as this, um, you see the project shows, if you slide the square up and down a little portion well you know so where is this machinery you know where you know uh, wh why was it, uh, some portions of only a minority of the boxes did they use advanced machinery and then not everywhere else uh, well because they didn't use machinery there is no evidence of it the impossible to achieve without machinery argument is just not true uh, it, it can be done and it's still being modern technology actually still relies on these ancient principles to achieve these types of things and on its own a right angle is not at all impressive because you can go to any historic graveyard any historic building where you will find that granite was being worked before diamond tools um, where you'll see 90 degrees it's it's it is standard in masonry to achieve 90 degrees it's not it's not at all impressive in any sense of the word it is it is standard but again so the majority of these boxes are not polished um, the majority of these boxes are not 90 degrees and even those that are are only at portions of 90 degrees so it's not uh, and the flatness of it and I'll do a one on flatness um, future so yeah if you cherry pick one part of a box and you put a set square against it you're going to get 90 degrees but uh, You'll also get 92.4 degrees and you'll also get boxes that are not flat and that are not 90 degrees. This, is, this, this would be the, the majority of these types of these boxes here in the Serapeum. So the, the squareness is uh, the minority and the flatness is also a minority and the flatness is also another important part because it's, yeah, very iffy in regards to that so deception by omission of a truth is as bad as a lie and uh, this uh, so much is not covered so they'll tell you it's impossible but it's possible I'll t they'll show one feature and go oh this is a defining feature well it's actually a rare feature and even then these rare mysterious unexplainable features are pretty much uh, standard across the world. Uh, the, the granite here in Sydney that they used prior to modern tools, but whether it's Paris, France, London, uh, the, the Vatican, um, uh, Indian temples, including a recently built one in Hawaii, these types of features are just standard, not, not at all really mysterious. It's only when they tell you it's impossible it can't be done. Well, it can. Um, I've, you can cover that, but Here's another very important feature which is never covered and discussed in regards to this impossible to achieve without machinery tools and it's just the concept of craftsmanship and so for instance I'm just showing here a clock uh, which has I think this one also has an alarm clock built into it as well this is from the 1680s all of this is prior to uh, you know modern advanced machining tools and measuring tools old world craftsmanship where it's not only beautiful but it's built to last it's built at a different time with a different mentality but these were handmade tools so intricate so many different working parts that all have to work and be precise and work with one another 
um, this was built at a time when ancient technology was still defining. This was still horse and buggy time. For, you know, where, you know, now, steam engines is not... Uh, it's a labour-saving device, but it's not a precision tool. Now, anything that a steam engine can do, a team of horses or or men could uh, do. So even the Industrial Revolution didn't really bring in this uh, high-precision machinery. This is very, very modern in the sense of those terms. But these, this is beautiful. This is intricate. This is precise. And now, how did they achieve this? Now, why is this not defined as lost high ancient technology? Uh, it's small, it's finicky, it's precise, but uh, now how did they do it? Well, it's a matter of ancient skills and, and craftsmanship. Uh, f for instance, um, someone I know used to sell plastic bags um, and all sorts of them, and, and, ba and these bags are measured by microns. The skill of, once you get used to it, just by running the bag through their fingers, they could de de separate, you know, bags which are measured in microns and identify them. That's by hand and by eye, once you're skilled, you can achieve amazing things. And that, in, well, that goes to craftsmanship. So these delicate mechanisms, multiple pieces working together, uh, the precision and was done largely by hand and by eye. Highly experienced people who had learnt from their fathers, who learnt from their grandfathers, who learnt from their great-grandfathers, this pr transmission of knowledge and skills and also the philosophy of doing things really well which in this you know, mass production uh, mentality that we have now is just being completely lost so this is yeah you know brilliant you know, modern technology but this is old world craftsmanship so when it comes you know whether it's the old cathedrals the old temples or the things such as the antikythera mechanism as well old world craftsmanship uh, done by hand and by eye and also a different philosophy of how to make things things built to last in you know modern technology in terms of mass production much better uh, in aeronautics and stuff now we've got to we can do higher precision work with machinery but this is a recent advancement the precision machinery uh, of old was by hand and by eye uh, okay, if you do, if you just look into Japanese woodworking, uh, Japanese plane competitions, how these um, master carpenters now I bring in Japan because it's one of the few places where this old world craftsmanship is still cherished and still being promoted and done. But if you look at their incredible working skills and how they achieve these things with hand tools, with very 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 simple tools, they achieve precise joinery which is just you know it's it's uh you know it's just insanely perfect and 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 well done and it comes from a different philosophy of of working and also woodworking would also apply to lost high technology so a lot of the very simple tools for cutting stone in to be very precise with some very simple woodworking building guides and jigs and, and so forth you can improve those uh, reconstructions of cutting granite with with copper, for instance, you just bring in a few pieces of wood as a guide, and uh, and it increases the efficiency and and the precision of it very much as well. So that's another thing that's missing. Well, you know, some really basic woodworking skills. Uh, j j again, just it's a game changer in terms of of how to achieve these impossible stoneworking uh, techniques. Because uh, I'd only watched it a couple of days before, remembering a carver uh, Itu Susumo by David Bull. It's a great video because it's uh, about a man's journey from being a hobbyist to a craftsman and also again it goes into the secrecy of master crafts people who jealously protect their trades and their skills. If you watch them at work and you see how gentle and how precise and how patient and how devoted they are to their craft it is uh, it's, it's fascinating and it's beautiful and it's also a window into the old world of doing things well craftsmanship skills that have been honed and 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 over time as we're uh, now it's all about power tools disposable power tools as well and the, the loss of skills of hand tools and and the loss of the just the mentality of doing things really really well and doing them properly freemasonry is 
also very famous for its secrecy, but Freemasonry uh, emerged from the old stonemason guilds who were also famous for their secrecy. This is something which is just runs through uh, the old trade skills and craft skills, like trade secrets. Uh, there's a few images of, uh, like, for instance, uh, Egyptian craftsmen and masons um, at work, and but uh, also ro the Roman collegia. Uh, but back to so symmetry uh, again. So uh, symmetry was very very important in the art form uh, architecture of Egypt, and but again asymmetry, uh, like it's you know. Um, this is a step beyond uh, in terms of it's it gets lifelike it captures it's a three-dimensional photograph in basalt which again uh, the Romans and Greeks did and it's just uh, this is denied when it is just a, a, a plain fact and again granite basalt and these harder stones you know in beautiful sculpture in straight edges right angles it, it just dom it's just like everywhere where it is it's it's a standard not a a uh, unique thing that's indicative of some uh, ancient machine technology, but even the concept of symmetry itself. So again, once you, you look at the craftsmanship that's still being applied, and and the skill of the craftsman with you know even the ones prior to modern measuring tools and those these instruments were able to achieve, for instance, uh, clock making. It that's the prime example. Tiny, intricate, complex pieces all working together requiring a precision which was essentially by eye and by hand skilled craftsmen can do craftspeople uh, uh, it, this is expected to be a skilled craftsperson you craft person you need to have this that's what defines that's the definition of these old world uh, craftspeople who worked patiently and and dedicated with very simple ancient primitive tools just achieved amazing things so even this symmetry alone, which is uh, uh, plenty of videos out there, for instance, the uh, Kemet uh, Institute people say it's machine, modern, laser, computer, even with computer, you know, well, no, it's, uh, like, firstly, well, we're, you know, these things haven't, you know, where, where is the where is the data that these things have been measured in that sense, but uh, these measurements were, were, uh, were, were used using basically a, a modern hand tool, but with calipers, the skill of a craftsman this symmetry in itself is not unusual it's it, again it, it don't you know you'll find symmetrical all sorts of features whether it's uh, column capitals and and or uh, colonnades and all these other features as well um, but again the symmetry of a perfection the precision for instance of these old clock makers with skill and with very simple tools it is standard practice rather than something which is unique or, or, you know, it's not just the ancient Egyptians. That even until the modern era, uh, this type of work by master craftsmen is, is just everywhere to be found. It's just not appreciated anymore. Even the, this concept of, of the skilled master craftsperson who, who really knew their work and who were trained and developed and, and just developed those skills with by eye and by hand to achieve these things so uh, it's well it's explainable and actually not only is it explainable it's again to be found in all sorts of um, aspects up before modern technology to the hobbyist uh, the patience and the skill of a master craftsperson is it's difficult to comprehend the way they work so slow and and uh, precise as well so again, the, for instance, this, the, the clockmakers, I think that's the prime example of precision skill without advanced machinery in, on a level of complexity. So it's very small, but the small adds to the level of difficulty rather than subtract from it. So uh, this in its own, that there is a, uh, it requires machinery, lost ancient advanced machinery. It's no, uh, it, it, uh, it does not. It is not impossible. Uh, again, there's a series, what the ancients knew, they go to China, Japan, Rome, Greece, Egypt and other places. But the Japanese one, I think, is uh, important uh, because of the, uh, it shows the skill. So these ancient skills 
of creating precision by hand tools was the basis for the development of of uh, well, Japanese electronics for a long time. Still now, they they're like the high level electronics. Uh, basically, if you get a, a measure, the best measuring instruments will come from places such as Switzerland and Japan, where these master clock makers, tool makers, are still practicing their art. So actually, so much of the modern precision equipment is built on ancient techniques to achieve perfect flatness, for instance, which is, again, with the Serapeum boxes. That, uh, firstly, I would argue that um, the boxes are not that flat because you can't measure a small part of a large box and say the whole box is flat. You've only measured that particular part of the box. You have to take, to measure flatness, you need to take points and then you would find an average amongst them. So uh, that same thing, I could take a, um, a calibrated straight edge and just go to a, a, a graveyard or a cathedral and and find that level of flatness being again quite standard uh, you know across time cross cultures it's it but this precision cutting polishing or even lifting all of these technologies are uh, the modern versions we just use better materials and we now it's a you know, economics has changed things but all of this modern technology is really based on the master craftsmen and their the precision so especially flatness would be one of the main features in regards to that so for instance in uh, making the lenses and uh, for telescopes and the mirrors they're at a level of precision which is just uh, measured in nanometers and how do they achieve it they use this very ancient technique called lapping this is basically rubbing two surfaces you'll actually need three surfaces to be best but if you rub two surfaces together and you just keep at it, you're going to create a near-perfect flat surface. Uh, also, this is anecdotal, as I've been told, but, but it's actually hand polish, because lapping is done by hand. Hand lapping, I do believe, is, uh, is more precise than machine, because machines are very uh, regular, as where the, you know, the, the randomness of hand lapping actually makes it uh, better because if you do lapping and just just rub sort of in the same direction in the same format you'll actually sort of create a very gentle bow but with a bit more of an irregular pattern hand polishing hand lapping will create a surface uh, of precision flatness to within nanometers and that's exactly the same what they still do now the ancient technique of polishing is still the best to uh, achieve this it does not require advanced machinery there is no evidence of advanced ancient machinery in there. Its craftsman uh, skills can achieve it. So with this, in the uh, older depictions as well, where we see polishers at work, for instance, there's a couple famous ones of uh, Egyptians polishing, uh, a, they're chiseling and polishing a sphinx, and there are many beautiful, perfectly polished sphinxes, but in regards to flatness, very primitive very ancient technique of polishing will give you very high levels of flatness so you don't you don't go out to achieve it just the polishing in itself will lead to this precision this is not uh yes this is not an unexplainable mystery or, or evidence of machining at all quite the opposite the modern machinery is evidence of the ancient techniques and the ancient craftsmen which have so where was the first to calibrate and make the first precision machines they had to be made somewhere they had to, to find flatness well how did they you know before super duper you know laser and nanobots to do these you know type of things it had to start somewhere and it started the first machine had to be made by hand then that machine and, and so forth so it originates from hand tools uh, master craftsmen patience and you know, hard work I'll try, I hope, well, the science of flatness or the origins of precision and first project introduction. So this will go into how they measure flatness, how they achieve flatness, which will be also relevant to the flatness of the Serapeum as well, because in, but I'll do that in the future. But uh, these are worth watching, especially the science of flatness, uh, at least as an, as an introduction to, well, how we still achieve high levels of uh, precision flatness um, and again that lapping uh, just by rubbing by hand two things together will create 
uh, a flatness that can be measured within nanometers. Uh, for, I, think, I think it's 30 hydrogen atoms of near perfect flatness. It's just a uh, it's hand tools. It's old fashioned hard work and skills. <laughs> Indeed, it will. Uh, so impossible means not possible. The entire argument, uh, the basis for where's the evidence for lost high technology is it's impossible. Therefore, it has to be lost high technology, uh, ancient machine to, in an ancient machining. That's a powerful argument if it was impossible. Um, okay, that, missing, okay, typo there, but that would be a powerful argument. Yes, if it is impossible, that would therefore, you know, Occam's razor, it, you know, it would need to be that. However, everything which is described as impossible is actually possible. This is uh, even in previous videos of uh, link uh, other channels who actually do experimentation and, and prove it beyond like they literally do it and you can do it for yourself that's also the beauty of these things uh, uh, since um, I've been for a couple of months mucking around with stone and then I recently got back into it after watching the scientists against myth and and their work in there and you know there's nothing better than in that sense um uh, yeah to to do these things so since it is not impossible and it's proven to be possible with ancient techniques, it is a house of cards and the emperor has no clothes um, in regards to that because either we, f we find some written record, some imagery, or some evidence of the actual ancient machine tool tools themselves and there is no evidence for it. It's based on not being possible, but it is possible and they, and they don't want you to know this. And, uh, and again, using very, you know, um, you know, pointing a camera at a stone and pointing at it and saying that's impossible. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> sorry, but it's uh, you know actually do it when you see people do it. You know, they'll a lot of people will tell you things are impossible because they can't do it, they can't comprehend it, or it's very profitable for them in that sense as well, and that needs to be suppressed, which is why they'll in, invoke these arguments of us versus them, and uh, yeah. It, um, so, opportunity missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. Yeah, you know, it's uh, what you can do when you put your mind to it and put your, your, you know, you actually do it, whether it's lifting, cutting, polishing, um, not just theoretically, but again, practiced throughout time, not just in the ancient past. And so why is it, were the Egyptians somehow different or, you know, or ancient peoples, as I say, were the ancient people so different that they could not do the things and uh, make the very simple machines, very simple machine, like, you know, based on the lever, inclined plane, and so forth, that the Romans did, which could lift massive objects, cut stone, etc. Um, you know, I think it's like, what, why are they seen as, you know, stupid, really? Uh, but everyone else could do it later, which, of course, you don't hear about all the stuff that come later, because then it's not impossible anymore, and therefore there's no profit in it. We do these things because we do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And well, yeah, you know, the the lost high ancient technology has to be ancient machines. You know, uh, it's a the modern mentality. I want it done. You know, I want it done in five minutes. You know, well, no, they, you know, even till not a very long ago, things just took time to do. That was just the nature of the game, and it has been for a long time. It's it's this modern mentality of instant coffee and fast food and I want it delivered now, I can't wait. Well, you know, but, you know, that's, you know, things aren't easy. So, uh, to those who have promote this, I'd say, if, you know, if you've never made a mistake, you've never made anything, mistake is, uh, you learn from your mistakes. A mistake is only, is only an error. If you fail to correct it, then it is a mistake. Uh, so, you know, you can, all you need to do is to say, well, here we see experimentation, which absolutely proves that it's not impossible. Here we see, uh, despite what I've been told, that flatness, round holes, uh, drilling can be achieved. But uh, if if you keep doubling down and promoting false statements, which are so easily to be checked, it says a lot about your opinion of your audience and a lot about your ethics as well.